everyone, welcome to WOWcast. I'm your host, Bethany Stout, and today we're going to talk about WOW Classic Hardcore Realms, and I have two special guests with me today. Hi, I'm Anna Rosendez, lead software engineer from the World of Warcraft Classic team. I am here to make sure that everything in the tech side is ready for uh, having Hardcore Realms to the players. And I'm Clay Stone, associate production director on the WOW Classic team. Uh, I'm in charge of making sure that the team is well supported, has everything it needs to continue to deliver great experiences for our players. The next one being WoW Classic Hardcore. When does Classic Hardcore come out? Yeah, World of Warcraft Classic Hardcore mode is coming out in August 24th. Oh, that's coming up soon. Yeah, very soon. <laughs> Can you tell us more about Classic Hardcore? Yeah, I mean, Hardcore, it's, I mean, it's not a new concept, right? It's a uh, Thing that a game mode that has uh, appeared in different kind of games, right? Like, for example, Diablo, right? Like, mm -hmm. you get to go in there and choose to just have one life and go through the hardcore mode. You know, and we are bringing that now to World of Warcraft for the first time officially, yeah? Like, you are gonna be in a realm where the moment that you create a character, you're kind of grinding the story for it, and it's just gonna have one storyline because it only will have one life. <laughs> So why Hardcore Mode now? You know, we've been watching for these past few years as a segment of the player base has been engaging in the Hardcore play style. Uh, to the point where we started playing uh, Hardcore as well. Uh, and we fell in love with it. It felt like a whole new way to approach World of Warcraft. There was a point where our senior producer, Josh Greenfield, came to the team and he said, hey, we should do this. We should support this officially. We should implement the rule set, create new realms, and provide this for our players. So we came together as a team. We looked at, well, what are those rules? What would we actually want to change? Uh, and that started us looking at uh, our available resources, timing, when could we do this? Uh, and it all made sense that now is the right time. Now is the time yeah. to officially support this, and we're just so excited to bring it to our players. Uh, but we did have an initial, you know, kind of like dipping our toes in it uh, when in Season of Mastery, which is one of the first different changes that we made, like a different environment within a WoW Classic. We added an optional toggle where players were like, okay, I want to go in into the challenge of only having one life. And basically, this buff, uh, once you died, uh, you would it would disappear and you would no longer have it, right? You know, it really was the base for us to go into the actual support of official hardcore servers. Uh, and not only from, you know, kind of like keep dipping our toes into hardcore, but also we, like in the classic team, we introduced this new technology where we're able to make changes to rule sets mm -hmm. that enable to have like the same client and the same data and everything living together, but like with slightly less differences. You can still, you're still going to be able to play the original game with infinite lives, um, but this really, like, Season of Mastery was what allowed us to be able to create these game modes. What are some of your favorite death moments? Oh, yeah. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll talk about my first one. Yeah. Uh, Wait, he doesn't want to. <laughs> so, that, so that nobody else out there feels bad in case this happens to them. Uh, I was playing a human paladin. I got all the way up to level six. Ooh, if you can believe wow, that, that, level that's, six. A, that, that's a long journey, yeah. I know. <laughs> and I was cruising along, uh, cruising so fast that I thought to myself, I don't need to run back to the trainer and get divine protection. So I <laughs> got the quest know. that I've done a dozen times before uh, to go retrieve Bernice's necklace from Cobalt uh, Fargo Deep Mine. Basically, ran through the thing to the room where Goldtooth lives. Uh, waited for Goldtooth to spawn, engaged immediately, and I turned and ran, did another thing I was supposed to do, I put my back to them, got stunned almost immediately, uh, and that was it for my first character. Yeah, rest so, in peace. Rest in peace. <laughs> you know, it, it, it sticks out in my mind because it was the first, and yeah. it's just unfortunate because it happened so fast, but the great news was, Seconds later, I had rolled another character and I, I was going again. And I wasn't going to make the same mistake again <laughs> the next time. Well, Clay, you're, you're not alone, right? Like, we've been looking at the PTR and, like, all the people playing there. And uh, really, Cobalt is the number one NPC that, like, kills the most people uh, in, in, in right now in the PTR. I believe it. It's their revenge plot for all the candles taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> 
right. we, we also know that some people change the way that they level to and like maybe avoid certain quests that they're like you know what that's not worth it or like avoid it for a little bit level more and then try it and be like i'm gonna be secure about this especially when you get to like the way higher levels right where like okay well you, you got to level six that's, great. That's, that's great. I get it. But, uh, you know, like getting closer to those level 50s in the 50s is like you spend a lot of time on that character. So you really need to be very sure that um, you have all of that in mind. Did your first character get past level six huh. <laughs> before she died? Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank well, you. actually, uh, you know. Rub I, it in. <laughs> When I first joined WoW, right, like the actual WoW universe, and the first time I played the game, and I spent like 20 minutes in the character screen just making sure that all the customizations were there, that I really liked my character, making sure it was a very cute... What was my first character? Oh, it was a Blood Elf, yeah. <laughs> I went upstairs after my mom helped me pick up all of these. We were happy with the character. Went upstairs, played for five minutes. I came downstairs and I'm like, Mom, I died. <laughs> I didn't understand that WoW, you had infinite lives. I thought that... You only had one so life. So that was your hardcore oh moment. That was, that was my, 2009. my first <laughs> hardcore moment. You were the yeah. original hardcore player. <laughs> yes, not a very good one, right? Like, I died like at level two. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for hardcore. What are some of the objectives you have in mind for hardcore realms? When we set out to create official hardcore realms, we really looked at what are our objectives in trying to accomplish this. And the first one is creating a very fair, equitable space where all players are playing by the same rules. Uh, everybody enters into a hardcore realm playing by the same rules with the same restrictions, same opportunities, but it's fair and balanced for everyone. Uh, the second one is really the focus on the player journey. What's so magical about hardcore is that it really places a renewed emphasis on the world of Azeroth and on that leveling experience from 1 to 60. Uh, so that's something that the team placed a lot of focus on. Uh, and then the third is We've seen on what we've called the unofficial hardcore realms uh, shenanigans happening yeah. <laughs> where As <it> happens. <laughs> players are unintentionally flagging themselves for PvP uh, and engaging in unintentional PvP activities. So the team has really taken a, a hard look at what's caused those in the past and what changes we can make to address them on these official realms. So <laughs> when we looked at what our capabilities were uh, and the, the rule set changes that we could make, we found a lot of opportunity to be able to make some tweaks so that when you wind up in a PvP situation, it's because you wanted to. I think that we found a lot of success there. How do you enable that? How do you enable PvP? Yeah, it's really, you know, it's it's a conscience mode. Uh, you have to use the command of PvP. You kind of agree to it, right? Um, I mean, there's also, if you ever go to the capital cities and mm -hmm. stuff like that, then you're getting into a situation where you know that people there and the wards there are not going to be happy with you, so it's going to be very, very scary. It's a, bit, a little bit different for the modern game where there's like other different systems like the war mode mode that doesn't exist in classic. This is more of a, you have to actually choose to do so. And in comparison to the PvP realms, in the PvP realms the starting zones are kind of like you are protected in a certain way, mm -hmm. you cannot attack someone unless they attack you. Uh, but once you get to the some zones, it kind of is like everybody is there for like each faction. If you find someone from the opposite faction, they can just attack you. And those are like kind of the realms that we have in Classic, but we're only gonna be going with the PvE one where it's like a very conscious um, thought of like getting into combat. That's definitely safer. Another yeah. tweak along those lines is we've changed it so that if you accidentally right click on uh, another player, uh, yeah. you don't accidentally uh, find yourself flagged yeah. for PvP. Okay. So what are some of the new features that the hardcore mode will have? Yeah, I mean, one of our new features is Duel to the Death, right? Um, we started seeing some players engage on it on the PTR. It's been super amazing to watch. This is one of those features that came from within the team. And, you know, we started talking about hardcore and about like all the cool things you can do in hardcore. And suddenly someone was like, someone in the team was like, we, we should definitely have Duel to the Dead, right? Like it's very appropriate to hardcore. It became an official thing. And now like really when you want to go Duel to the Dead, only one victor will come out of it. And yeah. we've seen like a lot of players engaging on it on PTR. Yeah, we actually had a tournament. Like, I don't know, Clay, if you want to talk more about the tournament. Yeah, so it, it's been so cool to see the way that players on yeah. the PTR have engaged with 
Makara or Doodle to Death. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our starter zones are littered with the uh, bodies of level one characters uh, because players just wanted to use it right away and, and try it out, which which has been fun. Something else that we've seen as well, we saw, uh, so on our PTR realm, our current level cap is level 30. So players are able to level up their characters level 30. Uh, and the community organized a level 30 duel to the death tournament. Yeah. And it, our whole team watched it. Uh, it was so cool to see these players who have invested so much yeah. time already, even just to, to level 30, uh, but to prepare for this tournament. And to know that at the end of the day, there was only going to be one left standing and all the other players were never going to be able to play those characters again on the hardcore PTR. <laughs> and we felt while we were watching this that for yeah. everyone watching this, it, it felt like an honor that these players had put yeah. so much time and effort into these characters only to risk losing it oh in gosh. a tournament like this. It, it yeah. heightened the the experience and it uh, it made the tournament feel so meaningful mm -hmm. because of it. It was it was awesome. Yeah, you know something really cool about the duel to that is that I mean it's a big deal, right? Like you just take somebody else's life. Also, you know, talking in the team, it's one of those things that we were like, hey, can, how can we make sure that um, players want to engage into these, but also like that they did this, they put all this effort. Uh, how can we? award them with something. Every time you win a duel to the death, you collect one of their ears. Kind of like a nod to Diablo, kind of like a reference to Diablo. We had originally set the level to be able to earn that at level 10, but we found on the PTR that was a little too low. And we want to make sure that lower level players aren't being uh, taken out just to increase one's buff. So we've actually raised that to level 19, and that's what we'll be moving forward with for now, but we'll continue to watch it. Yeah, I mean, another one too is you have to be really close to each other level-wise, right? Like, because it wouldn't be fair of like, I'm going to have a level 40 character just battling level 10s, you know, oh, yeah. it's not fair. So you have to be within um, within your level to kind of make it through. Yeah, and the other very, very cool thing about Duel to the Dead is that we are going to have its own specific uh, flag. You see that flag drop and you know it is going down. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some great stories with Duel yes. to the Dead. I love this. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about 1v1, yeah. what about Battlegrounds and War Games? You know, the, the team thought about it, right? Like, when, when it's 1v1, it can be very consensual, very like, okay, let, let's duel to the dead, or um, even in the open world, you can like set yourself as like, I want to be a target for PvP, maybe when you're going to get those world buffs, you might need to go into uh, zones that are contested, right? We decided that it, like, hardcore is not the mode to, you know, go, you um, and get like put in together with another rest of other people and going into different battles like for example Warzone Gulch getting like to fight for the flags because in, in the original classic modes uh, where you have multiple lives really part of the story was like they expect you to be able to resurrect yeah. to make it a very fair battle that said we know that like some people actually want to go in and engage um, into a battle for the flags or a battle for contesting in a Wrath Basin and all of these things. And uh, you're still going to be able to do that, but you're going to have to do it in a consensual way of getting uh, a team of your own and maybe an enemy team or a friend group team uh, where you can go and battle it out. So you're always going to be able to do war games where it's like kind of like a duel, but like dueling each other into a battleground. But this is not like Duel to the Dead. Um, if you decide to finish the battleground before, you can still come out of the battleground like while having your life <laughs> intact. We expect that we would probably just see a lot of non-participation, where players would hop in, stand in the back, wait for the battleground to end, and collect the rewards from, from non-participation. So it just didn't really yeah. make sense for hardcore. This seems intimidating to have yeah. one life. Yes. Can new players play hardcore mode? Oh, for sure. I think. It makes it a great experience for multiple reasons, right? Like, yes, you only have one life, but you can go in, try it, maybe have an unfortunate ending to that character, but you get to try it again. So I feel like it's a very good way to have someone new to go and experience it because there's going to be so many people playing it and really you're going to have to be really aware of what your class does. It's like a great learning time. We have been so surprised by the number of players who have come to World of Warcraft for the first time just to play mm -hmm. hardcore. 
the approach to it is is it feels so different. You tend to play slower. You tend to always be surrounded by people. One of the nicest things is even though death happens, you yep. go again, you roll another character, and you find yourself in a starting zone that is surrounded by other players. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, absolutely no surrounded. No more ghost towns, just like embracing the community. Well, technically, there's yeah, ghost towns. Yeah, there's so many ghost towns now, like, because you can continue to play the That's game true. while being a ghost, yeah. In hardcore, we believe in ghosts, ghosts exist. Um, you can stay there and rumble around the world. That's it, you're not gonna be able to still use, for example, the, the Say channel, but you're still going to be able to talk to your friends in the guild chat. You can also transfer guild leadership, too. Yeah. If you happen to be oh, the, the well leader. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the guild can continue without you. It, it, it can continue with you in memory. Yes. <laughs> when someone dies, it's going to be announced in the guild chat. Uh -huh. So if you're part of a guild, it's going to be showing up in the guild chat. We are aware that there are going to be a lot of fallen soldiers. If you were to announce every single dead, it might become a lot for some players. So your community wants to know how you're doing. It wants to know how, how, how is it that you're doing, your journey, and also the end of your journey, right? So if you die in WoW Classic uh, Hardcore at the moment, you can also uh, choose to transfer your character. So it's not super scary. <laughs> if you end up getting attached to your character, you can continue your journey, just not on the hardcore yes. one. Yes. And we also want to celebrate the victories of the mm -hmm. players too, right? Okay. So whenever someone gets to level 60, that one is going to be a realm announcement oh, and nice. everybody is going to be able to see who who's the one getting to 60. I'm really excited to be online and see the first person, you know, going to level 60. I, I know it's going to it's going to be a really interesting race to see. Yeah. You know, that's a really interesting point about, let's say, the race to 60. Yeah. We're, we're fascinated by it because for hardcore, mm -hmm. that level up process from 1 to 60, and you approach it so differently in the hardcore space, uh, you're more aware of your surroundings, you tend to go a little bit slower, uh, but it, it makes you re-examine Azeroth in ways that you hadn't before, and even some of the same quest lines. If you've played World of Warcraft for years and years and years now, it feels new and it feels fresh. But we recognize that as soon as we launch these realms, there's going to be players who race to 60. Of oh, course, yeah. it's yeah. unavoidable. So it's going to be really fascinating to watch. Yeah, I mean, hardcore is really catering to a uh, a huge range. It's World of Warcraft. It gathers to a huge range. We understand for some people it's going to be the journey. Like maybe some people will like to stay at level 19 and do Warzone Gulch. Maybe other players might go out and get to level 60 and then go and engage into <laughs> the ratings, right? Like yeah. the actual raids with Oof. the huge bosses. It takes a lot of preparation and trust in your team for sure. Like those raids are also like a reminder that raids in classic are 40 people raids. So oh my God. 40 people putting their lives um, there, right? Which we are adding like some changes to uh, to the raids. Well, this affects a lot of raid, not necessarily only for raids, but like we are removing the buff and debuff limit. Okay. Yeah. So it, it will create like it will make it maybe a little bit like easier. Yes. For example, this debuff in the boss might not do as much damage as this other ability. So please don't cast it. But now you're gonna be able <laughs> to do it. Contribute to your da damage meters and continue to do all of all of those things. That does help with rating. For yes. Sure. <laughs> when we think about the the rating that we expect to see. Back when Classic launched in 2019, Molten Core was cleared in five days. Yeah. Since we're going to be launching these realms at their final phase and their final feature sets, that means that players will be able to go all the way up through Naxxramas. Uh, that's going to be incredible to watch. What about dungeons in hardcore mode? What's the difference there? When we think about hardcore and we think about that focus on the outdoor world and the, the exploration and the journey mm -hmm. from 1 to 60, being able just to spam dungeons yeah. to level up your character sounds a little antithetical or against <laughs> the spirit of hardcore. Uh, but that being said, we recognize that players yeah. love the dungeons in Classic and they want to be able to play them, so we've put in a 24-hour timer where players will be able to run a dungeon once every 24 hours. Now that being said, once you hit level 60, you can spam dungeons to your heart's content. Uh, yeah. But outside of that, in your level up journey, you know, we expect the player base to really be focused on uh, the outdoor content. When you're out in the outdoor world, sometimes monsters, creatures can just follow you for a very long time. Is that going to be something in hardcore? Uh, yeah, so we, we've all seen the videos of Terramis being kited uh, to Stormwind. Uh, Terramis is a very high level 
uh, mob that players can encounter in the open world uh, and unfortunately is not supposed to exist in a major capital city like Stormwind. <laughs> yeah. uh, Terramus is supposed to exist in the Blasted Lands. The guards aren't doing their job. <laughs> so we've invested time to make sure that the leash range for uh, characters uh, or mobs mm -hmm. such as Terramis is a lot shorter and more appropriate in that they, they stay closer to where they're supposed to be. Yeah, and, and, and the thing too is that we also know that and we recognize that some of the classes like hunters and mages really rely on kiting those characters. So it's going to be a long enough range so players can still use their abilities without like losing the control of the beast. Speaking of hunter, are there any class changes coming with hardcore to make things more fair too? Yeah, I mean, we definitely had to revisit that, starting with resurrection, right? <laughs> like that out of the door, that's not gonna happen. Well, any kind of like spell that does that is gonna be out, you know, resurrection, soul stones, ank from the shamans. It will be really unfair if, if we still keep some of these classes, uh, these uh, mechanics um, that allow you know, to go against the spirit of hardcore. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the big ones is bubble hearthing, uh, yes, where yes. paladins Infinite. can <laughs> cast a uh, divine shield on themselves and be able to hearth anywhere uh, out of out of danger. Yep. Uh, it's certainly an iconic move, although p perhaps not particularly heroic for yeah, paladins yeah. to do this. Uh, so we've removed their ability to be able to do that. When we look at the classes and the different mm -hmm. class changes that we've made, keeping some things in like this that go against the spirit of hardcore, unfortunately, just really creates some wild class imbalance oh, I was going to say, there'd be paladins everywhere. <laughs> yes, that would be yeah. the, the class of choice for sure. Yes. <laughs> we also have talked about like different mechanics that exist in the game. I know that one that the community is really talking about is Flask of Petrification, you know? Flask of Petrification really allows you to have immunity for a little bit so you can get out of like certain situations. One of the reasons why we decided to keep it for now in the game and we're gonna be monitoring it is that really we're talking about like high end, the end of the game uh, rating, right? And it's, it's a point where you have invested so much time that sometimes it's okay to have like a safety net, right? Like a small, very, very specific safety net. Yeah, you know, we imagine for people who want to attain a flask of petrification, not only do they have to find the recipe, they have to farm the, the black lotus. That is a non-trivial amount yeah. of work to do. And when you've invested that much time into a character to get to level 60, we feel like it's okay to have just a little bit of protection. So make friends with an alchemist? Yes. Or become an alchemist. <laughs> yes. An herbalist. <laughs> yes. The community is very excited. We're yeah. all very excited for I am hardcore. Super excited. <laughs> yeah. What is some of the feedback that you've seen that you know you'd like to pay attention to in this conversation? Yeah, I mean in general we have seen a a huge excitement from the community. One of the biggest ones, uh, points of contact has been, you know, action house using the mail, because um, in the unofficial servers, uh, part of some people's rules its rule sets might be like, you don't get to engage with those, right? For us, we want to go out, uh, enabling the action house and uh, the mail and also uh, trading. Because as we mentioned before, we're in a very different environment than the one that it is in the other servers where not everybody is going into the same challenge. That desire for a self-found option uh, we, we've heard it loud and clear. And there's <laughs> yes. even members on the team that, that would want to yeah. play with that option enabled. So what we've looked into is, not for launch, but af sometime after launch, enabling an option for players to choose from that allows them to play without being able to trade, use the auction house, or use mail. So a self-found option. Uh, not much more to discuss on that yeah. for today, but something that, that we're really looking into. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for talking about Hardcore. I am so excited. I can't wait until this comes out. Thank you guys for tuning in to WowCast. See you next time. Thank, Thank you. you. See you.